thanks for thanks uh, Nick, Jeff, um, Sean. Thanks for everybody that's here and uh, lit quake. Lit quake. I recently finished with my MFA, so I'm a service industry professional. Take your bartender <laughs> or uh, your barista. Uh, I have um, I have two epigraphs and a thing I found on Wikipedia that I thought was really really interesting uh, that I'm going to read for you. The first epigraph is from a poem by Kevin Young. And the line is, I want to be doused in cheese. That's from his poem, Ode to the Midwest. This is my poem, Ode to the Midwest. <laughs> Thick blood, that's kin, that's cholesterol, that's gas station chili, dog, that's 250. Hold the cheese, says Italian. Ohioan says, hater of Gouda, Brie of Swiss. Jack, cheddar, I'll make an exception for snow showers of Parmesan falling onto little snow-globed piles of pasta, hard crust of Briar Hill pizza, hard crust of human being, takeaway major food group, still Italian blood, Ohio body. Uh, the next ep epigraph is from a song by Animal Collective uh, called The Kite. And the, the lyrics are, uh, what were we singing? Uh, I can't believe this goodbye. You're given these feelings and just set adrift like a kite. This poem is titled, A String of Balloons. Fifteen days into your eulogy, you are still alive. In bed, in slippers, your laugh leaves us all in stitches. Are you a gambling man? Do you play your living odds like a lump of sugar too many upon a spoon set beside a teacup? Is death a snake-eyed stare you roll at each doctor prescribing you five and seven and ten days to live? What I mean to say is that you live in spite, despite knowing even what cruelty looks like. Sleepless, we wait, we fill ourselves with whatever warm fire we can find, whatever warm fire we can breathe into you. West and the sun is setting in the east, west. Now the sun rises over every day since a few days, a week, ten. Welcome to overtime. Congratulations on making the playoffs in your Halloween onesie. Brevity, your signature. I think of things you'll never know. All your pain remains unnamed. Doctors tinkering dons a blurry name tag left vacant. But love, that thing which holds your hand, you came to understand that one thing had a name. It was her eyes, her ever wakeful body beside your body in bed, the only thing you learned, mother. The art of untying things is such, Weston. Weston, the kite, when they untie you, you are finally flying. Uh, and then this last poem is references from the Wikipedia entry on chicken and waffles. Uh, one, you are a friend helping me move from an apartment in San Francisco I can no longer afford to a newly gentrified neighborhood in Oakland. I'm conflicted about all of these details. <laughs> the chicken is too hot, symptomatically fresh from the fryer, but my self-control remains unpacked, sprawled across an air mattress next to a pile of books of poems. A few pages of your own are folded inside like bookmarks. Do you realize how entirely the beautiful things you make punctuate every sentence now? The waffle has a buttery crisp to it, golden like a California sun falling into Lake Merritt. Will it look like this in Los Angeles? Will Lou Bega's Mambo Number no. 5 ever sound this sad? <laughs> Who will I smoke drugs with once you've moved back south? Two, you are an ex-girlfriend more quiet than usual, more dark eyes than dark hair, more empty eyes than full plate. You say, this is the best fried chicken I'd ever had. You say, this batter was perfect. Later, you say, I couldn't have possibly done better. Only later in the subway, hands and stomach completely empty, do I realize you were not talking about dinner. Three, you are in the South. 
There are chicken and waffles everywhere. Since I am not there to eat the leftovers off your plate, you do not order chicken and waffles. Since I am not there to lick the syrup off your cheek, you do not order breakfast. Bed is cold, but you know as well as I that there is simply nowhere else to go alone. Four, you are in history because when you tell me about eating at Gladys Knight's chicken and waffles while in Atlanta on a trip for your mom's business, you say it's where we ate. Missing your mom is like being hungry for something that nobody could ever cook. Five, you are an older brother outside of the pencil-thin boundaries of where you belong. I pick you up at the airport in Los Angeles and offer to carry your backpack. You opt to continue carrying the Midwest's bitter cold and lines around your eyes. Our 16 months apart grow and spread like butter across a skillet, like flat batter in a thin waffle. A four-year-old skateboard slash hip-hop prodigy hands you a business card. You hand the card to me. For a moment, our fingers do not touch, but blood at the tips of them warms, acknowledging how close their sameness have came across the country. For another moment, coffee sits smoking at the top of two identical mugs. Yours, sugar, mine, black. This is Roscoe's. This is the Hollywood Hills. This is the last time I will see you for a year. We only know now, only remember then, couldn't predict tomorrow. You leave behind an entire drumstick like an unfulfilled footnote or an apostrophe claiming nothing. Thank you. Tony De Janeiro, ladies and gentlemen.